Scene 1408 here. Don't forget to like and subscribe. On Christmas Eve, Angela is working on a company deal with clients. Jody, one of her co-workers, approaches to offer help, but Angela just tells her to return home. Angela's other co-worker, Jim, comes to apologize for harassing Angela while he was drunk the day before. Angela forgives him since she doesn't want to deal with the problem any longer. Only minutes into the movie, and I can already spirituality relate with Angela. This ought to be good. Angela calls her family and promises that she will arrive on time for dinner. She finishes her work a few hours later and bumps into Carl, the company's security guard, and makes her way down to the lobby together. Angela arrives at the parking lot and attempts to start her car, only to discover that the engine can't start. Angela chooses to return to the lobby and catch a taxi. However, all of the company's doors are already locked. Angela goes to the security office and asks to let her in. Rocky, a Rottweiler dog, barks at Angela as she opens the door. Here's a fun fact. The Rottweiler is one of the most common protection dogs. When a family member is in danger or simply under threat, he or she becomes extremely protective. Furthermore, Rottweilers do not get along well with strangers, which makes it quite weird for the dog to bark at Angela when she is supposedly a regular there. The dog's owner, Thomas, tries to calm him down. Angela informs Thomas that she needs to order a taxi. Knowing that getting a taxi on Christmas Eve will be difficult, Thomas volunteers to charge Angela's car battery. Angela considers for a moment, then agrees to give the idea a shot. However, after some time, Angela starts to realize that this will take a while. She thanks Thomas for trying and asks him once more to give access to the lobby. After the door opens, Angela thanks him once again and bids him goodbye. After calling for a taxi, Angela falls asleep. The driver wakes her up shortly after the taxi arrives. Angela notices that Carl has also locked the main door. The driver gets tired of waiting and leaves Angela, who is still attempting to contact for help at level P1. The parking light goes out, so Angela uses the light from her cell phone to get to her car at P2. Let me remind all of you that this is a 2007 movie, so don't expect anything too advanced when it comes to technology. As one would in a dark space, Angela trips and her things scattered all over. A figure appears behind her. It was Thomas, and he was just standing there, waiting for her. When the time is right, he strikes. He covers Angela's nose and mouth with a handkerchief of chloroform. And so she went to sleep, for the second time that night. Angela wakes up in a dress. Angela vomits on the carpet as a result of the chloroform. By the way, props to the producers for noticing that, a very cool detail. Angela notices her legs are tied to the table and asks, what do you want? While Thomas continues to talk about himself. I only want to know where you're from, Thomas says calmly as he opens a bottle of wine. Thomas states that he is helping Angela so that she can enjoy her alone time. Angela then tells Thomas that if she doesn't return home soon, her boyfriend will go looking for her. Thomas recognizes her lie and instructs Angela to lie to her family as well. Thomas rewards her by taking her on a drive when she successfully tells her family that she won't be able to attend the dinner because she feels sick. Angela grabs the knife and stabs Thomas in the back while Thomas unties the cuffs on her ankles. Sadly, Thomas is able to prevent Angela from escaping. He handcuffs her and drives her to his car. As Thomas takes Angela to P4, she is puzzled. Thomas leads Angela to the present he has planned for her. Jim, her other co-worker mentioned earlier, is seated in a wheelchair, his lips, hands, and feet taped up. Thomas gives Angela a baton and instructs her to teach Jim a lesson. Thomas becomes enraged when Angela begs him not to hurt Jim. Angela decides that it is better if she beats Jim and then escapes, so she agrees to do so. Thomas, on the other hand, recognizes that he is going to psychologically destroy Angela, so he changed his mind and did it on his own. Thomas then returns to the car after destroying Jim's face, ramming Jim with his car and crushing him against the wall. Angela takes advantage of the opportunity to escape as Thomas hides Jim's body. She returns to Thomas' office to pick up her phone and access card, somehow knowing that's exactly where he hid them. At the same time that Thomas contacts Angela, Angela dials 911. Angela barely managed to escape before Thomas catches her. Angela is able to get into the elevator after opening the lobby door. Angela learns that the lift requires a key, so she taps the elevator's emergency call button. On the other end of the line, someone answers Angela's call. It's Thomas. To be fair, I have no idea what Angela was expecting there. 
What? Does she think that the emergency button will get her in contact with the police or something? Angela informs Thomas that she has called the cops and will remain in the elevator until they arrive. Thomas forces Angela to leave the elevator from the top floor. He uses a fire hose from a higher floor to flood the lift. As the elevator fills with water, Carl's body falls from the ceiling. Angela then makes the decision to leave. Angela hides under one of the cars, drenched and cold. Thomas notices Angela's wet footprints and begins to walk in her footsteps. When Thomas hears Angela's trembling voice, he smashes the car's tires and compels Angela to run once more. This time, Thomas does not chase her, instead keeping an eye on her through his office's security camera while listening to Elvis. A very sinister way of instilling fear, if I do say so myself and yet, a very cliche one. Angela breaks out an emergency fire axe and begins destroying the security cameras while making her way to Thomas' office. Sure, go on ahead and fight with a madman with a king axe. Don't even question whether he has a gun lying around or any sort of countermeasure. Because that's what protagonists do, sin. When Angela arrives at Thomas' office, she is shown a video of herself passing unconscious when Thomas dresses her and touches her bare body. Angela smashes the television, then notices two police officers. Without skipping a beat, Thomas tastes her from behind. After changing his clothes and hiding Angela in her trunk, Thomas approaches the two police officers. The policemen search the entire parking lot and return home after finding nothing. Angela quickly awakens, only to discover that she is trapped in the trunk of her car. She escapes and hurries to catch the policemen before they leave, but instead, she meets Thomas and Rocky at the door. After Thomas releases Rocky's leash, Angela runs again, and the chase begins. Angela smashes one of the rental car's windows in order to hide. When Rocky finds Angela, she uses the weapon she's carrying to kill the dog. Angela stumbles to a nearby rental car office and dials 911. Thomas chases her down, but she manages to spray him with some type of chemical, grabs a handful of rental car keys, and drives away in one of them. Angela almost makes it to the exit door before being rammed from the side by Thomas. The chase continues and ends with Angela emerging victorious. Angela, however, flips the car during the chase and gets knocked unconscious. Thomas opens the door to rescue her, but she stabs him in the eye with an envelope opener, suffocates him with her handcuffed chains, then uncuffs herself so she can handcuff him to the crashed car with his keys. A rather brutal turn of events, but I can't say I'm surprised. When Thomas sees his taser in Angela's hand and the gasoline in the car starts to leak, he panics even more. Thomas begins to apologize and asks as to why they are unable to spend more time together. Ah, so he's obsessed. Angela has had enough of Thomas's excuses and begins to walk away until he yells at her, calling her a stupid Angela changes her mind and approaches him. Merry Christmas, Thomas. She sets fire to the gasoline with the taser, engulfing the car and Thomas in flames. She stands there for a minute, watching him burn and listening to his screams, before turning around and leaving. Here, this movie ends. To watch more awesome and thought-provoking movie recaps, please subscribe to Scene 1408. Don't forget to like this video and tell us in the comments which movie you want to see.